welcome back to the class on LCD meter. In this lecture, we are going to calculate the voltage regulation by means of zero power factor method or Fortier triangle method. This is a circuit diagram to find the voltage regulation of the alternator. This is scatter winding. This is a field winding. Three determinants are calculated to the TPS switch. Through the TPS switch, and the two load is calculated. Here we kept a one voltmeter. Here we kept a one ammeter to measure the current as well as the Voltage. For the field winding, we apply the regulated DC voltage to the variable DF set to the switch. Here we kept a one ammeter to measure how much current is passes through the field winding. Here we have taken the prime over as a DC motor. The armature of the DC motor is connected to the rotor as alternator, mechanically coupled. So by means of a motor, we are going to give the mechanical input to the alternator. Now first we are going to see what is the procedure to calculate the voltage regulation alternator by Fortier triangle. So first of all, we have to conduct the OCC test. Nothing but we have to open the DPS switch. We have to open the DPS switch in a field winding and close the DPS switch for the motor. By means of three point starter, we have to start the motor. By adjusting this speed, we have to bring the speed of alternator to the reaching value. Then we have to close the DPS switch in a field winding of alternator. By varying this potential voltmeter, slowly increase the field current. And note down the reading of voltmeter. You can take the reading up to the rated voltage of a alternator. You take the reading of 10 readings nearly. This is the table for the open circuit. Now we have to bring the field current slowly to the zero so that this voltage also becomes a zero. We are not disturbing the mechanical input to the alternator. Now close the switch. Nothing but we are applying electrical load across the alternator. Now by changing the field current and changing the load, make the Ammeter reading is equal to the rated current of all alternator and voltmeter reading should be the zero. That is the first reading. The second reading is the, again by adjusting the field current and load, ammeter reading is rated value and voltmeter reading also the rated value. That is note of the two readings. Nothing but a, we are taking the field current at a rated armature current and zero voltage as well short circuit. We are noting the one more field current at a rated value of voltage as well as a rated current. These two readings are very very important to construct a voltage triangle along with the OCC data. How we are going to construct the voltage triangle that we are going to see now. On the x-axis you take the field current and the y-axis you take the open circuit voltage. Already we have a 10 reading so with the help of the 10 reading you draw a OCC curve. This is the OCC curve. Next, we have taken the one more reading that is a field current corresponding to the rated current. Voltage is zero. The rated field current, nothing but a, we are getting that point on x axis that you note down. That is A. Next, you have to draw a tangent to the OCC that is nothing but A line. This is the point corresponding to the field current where rated armature current is passing through the alternator and the voltage is zero. Next, you have to locate a second point where the field current and rated voltage and rated current is passing through the alternator. So, that point you are getting here. Field current corresponds to rated voltage on the y axis. That you take the point B. Now, length OA, how much length here we are getting? The same amount of the length you have to draw from the point P, that is this length. This length is equal to OA. Next, from the tip of this straight line, the point you have to take is Q. From the point Q, parallel to the edge line, you have to draw a one line that is intersecting the OCC at a R. Now we join the point R and P. We are getting a one triangle. This triangle is nothing but a Fortier triangle. This is the constant. Next, you draw a perpendicular bisector from the R to the Q. P, this length RS is nothing but a, the voltage drop in an alternator due to the leakage flux at a rated value. Next, the PS is nothing but a, because it is parallel to the x-axis, so it is representing the current. This is representing the voltage. Now the PS is representing the field current required to overcome the demagnetization effect in an alternator. Next. QS, the length QS is representing the field current required to overcome the 
leakage voltage drop due to the leakage if we observe here this 48 triangle is constant now we can move the 48 triangle to find the similar point like p now here we have moved the 48 triangle without disturbing the any length make sure that the point r is on the OCC. So here we are getting the one more 40 triangle. The point we have taken as a P dash. This is Q dash, this is R dash, this is S. Now you can move the same 40 triangle to the on the x axis. We are getting the here also one more 40 triangle that is the, this one. Now here we got the three points one is A, P dash, and P. Line join the A, P dash, P, we are getting the one curve that is nothing but a. 0 power factor full load curve. We want only the one quantity that is the length RS. The length RS is representing the leakage reactance drop, nothing but IAXL at a full load. The length PS is nothing but a field current required to overcome the armature reaction or demagnetization effect in a alternator. The QS is nothing but a field current required to overcome the leakage reactance. Now we are going to find out the voltage reaction. Already we know the one formula E01 equal to V cos theta plus IARA voltage plus V sin theta plus or minus IAXL. It is not IAXS. This is XL. Nothing but leakage drop. Already we know the leakage drop previously. That is equal to length, the length RS. The length RS you have take here. How much length? Nothing but the, in terms of voltage, that quantity you have to take. IA XL. Suppose if you got the, that length is represented as 50 volts, then you rotate this value as a 50 volts. Then you take the remaining all the values. Armature current at full load, that is given in the nature detail of a motor. Armature resistance also you can calculate. V is nothing but rated voltage. The power factor where we have to calculate, that also given in the numerical. So we can find out the E01. E01 is nothing but a the voltage induced in a scatter winding without armature here. Now here, corresponding to this voltage, you have to find out the field current. That field current is nothing but IF1. So here this is the E01, this is the OCC curve. From the OCC, we are going to find out the, that is IF1. IF1 is nothing but a field current corresponding to open circuit voltage in an alternator excluding the armature here. IF2 is nothing but length PS. In the previous diagram, the length PS is there. Length PS is nothing but you should not take into centimeters or meters. That is what the power is ampere. That is represent the second field current. Once you know the IF1 and IF2, by using this formula, that is calculate the IF. IF2 equal to square root of IF1 square plus IF2 square minus 2 IF2 cos of 90 plus or minus theta. Where plus for the Lagging power factor with minus for the leading power factor. So once you know this field current, now if you send this much of field current, what is the voltage will be induced in an alternator? That you have to calculate. Here we are finding corresponding to field current. We calculate how much is the voltage. Nothing but we are including the armature reaction. So once you got that value, this is the actual voltage induced in an alternator with all effects. I think but including the resistance, leakage reactions and armature reactions. This voltage minus the rated voltage divided by the rated voltage or no load voltage into 100 is nothing but a voltage regulation of alternator at a full load. This method of calculation of voltage regulation, voltage regulation method by using a 40 triangle. Now why should you study this 40 triangle method? Already we have a EMF method. Why should you study this 40 triangle method? By means of 40 triangle method, whatever the results we are getting, that is practically very near value. By means of EMF method, that is not that much of accurate, but the 40 triangle method is, a, it is very accurate method. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box of the channel, so that I am always welcome to answer all your